Hi everyone, welcome back to a new tutorial on my channel. Today I will demonstrate this horse ear for you in colored pencil. Actually, I wanted to put it in real time online for you, but that video got so long, so I decided to keep the original audio from the tutorial that I did on Patreon and then speed up some parts in between. So the parts without uh, text. So it's almost real time, but not really. And I hope you'll enjoy it. So I'll only demonstrate the left ear for you. And I couldn't find any more time to also edit the right ear and the forelock. So at the end of the video, I will put a uh, an image of how the drawing turned out in the end. So I hope you'll like this demonstration of this horse ear. I, I hope you'll find it helpful and then I'll catch you at the end of the video and I'll give you a little recap of my techniques. So enjoy watching. All right, now with the same walnut brown, I'm going to map out the darkest areas in the fur, just like I did with, with the graphite one. I'm using Walnut Brown because it's quite a neutral tone. You can still change the tone pretty easily. This whole right area of the ear here is pretty dark. So I'm giving that a base layer of Walnut Brown. Just mapping out the direction of all those clumps of hair. That makes it much easier for you to do the shading. So with color pencil we're working from light to dark. So although I'm using quite a dark color, I'm not pushing hard. You can see that this walnut brown has quite a red tone to it. I don't want the ear to look too red. You can see mostly yellow in it. So I'm going to switch now to Burnt Umber 280. With that I'm going to darken up some of the darker areas. You can see that this umber tone is a lot more yellow. And here alongside the edges, the hair is switching direction. So on the very edge, they are growing outwards and then they're switching direction. And then the clumps go inwards. So I like to take a lot of time <clears throat> for the base layer because if the foundation's okay it makes it so much so much easier to color the rest so just like with pastels I'm using the first layers to put in all the colors that I see in the places where I see them and then the next layers are for deepening the contrast and adding more value. Alright, so I've drawn around the lighter clumps of hair. Now I'm going to give those some color. And I'm going to start out with raw umber. This is number 180. I'm going to lightly shade that in. Still with a very light hand. Alright then, here in this area along the edge and here as well I can see some purple. 
switching to Caput Mortem Violet and I'm going to draw little hairs along the edge actually let's add another color let's add a dark sepia so this is a gray but it has a brown tone to it I would say a brown gray this I can use to darken up some areas without having to switch to black right away so I'm going to darken up this part and the base of the ear as well Alright, let's add some black now. So now I want to darken up the contrast, to hype up the contrast, and then based on that I can judge the values of the lighter colors. So I'm taking the black polychromos now. I'm only going to darken up the darkest areas that I see. Still not using too much pressure. Alright, so let's leave it like that for now. You can see that the, de uh, the uh, black adds a lot more contrast, but it does flatten out the colors a little bit more. So I'm not a fan of using black straight away, or only black. I always like to combine it with other colors as well. Now I want to go back in with the burnt umber. Add some more color to it. And now I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on the pencil, so um, that way I can really hype up the saturation. Because now I can see, now that I put it in the black, that the rest of the ear can be a lot darker as well. I'm going to make sure it's sharpened. For sharpeners I just use these ones. Not sure from which brand they are. But you can find them everywhere and they work just fine. So now I'm going to darken up the shadows in between those clumps of fur. You can just go over the black and that gives the black a lot more depth to it as well. So now I'm really looking at the reference photo to see where the clumps of fur are and how dark the shadows are in between them. Make sure to vary in the length of your strokes and the pressure as well. That way you get the most natural effect. You don't want to look it you don't want to make it look static or unnatural. Of course these hairs are always changing, so it doesn't really need to be exactly the reference photo. But do make sure to get the right colors in there. I'm just adding that brown on top of the black. That creates a really nice dark deep brown. So although colored pencil is an oily medium, you can still kind of blend and mix colors.
Alright, so now I have a lot of layers in and now I feel like I can do some burnishing. So I make sure that the pencil is sharp. Alright, and now I'm going to blend these colors in and I'm going to focus mostly on these lighter clumps of fur. I'm going to ignore the center because I don't want to lighten up the center area because then it will be really difficult to get it dark again using quite a lot of pressure now And the burnishing I just do to blend the colors together and to get rid of the texture of the paper. Right, like this, you can see that the burnishing does lighten up the colors, but now I can add more colors on top. So I'm going to do that with, let's go back to the burnt umber again. And I'm going to go over. Now I can really correct uh, the shapes of all these clumps. Divide them a bit more. So do make sure if you want to do burnishing like this to use paper that can handle it. It has to be thick enough but it also has to have um, just the right amount of texture. And now to pull out some little tiny hairs, some highlighted hairs, you can use a knife, a scalpel or an X-Acto knife. For this you also have to make sure that your paper can handle it. But I just can, as you can see, I can scratch off some of the pencil and create some hairs that way.
and I'm just pressing hard enough to lift some of that pencil off the paper but of course I don't want to go through the paper so be careful with that I just want to create some tiny hairs So after pulling out the final highlights and adding the final layers, this ear was done and I moved on to the other ear. I will put an image on screen of what the uh, drawing came out like. You can also find it on my Instagram. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you, if you aren't already. So this project took way longer than I thought. I spent like three hours on just these ears and forelock and also two hours on the graphite one but that tutorial of both the ears and the forelocks are in real time on my patreon for my four dollar tier so if you're interested in drawing along with me you can have a look on my patreon so how i work i start out just the same as i would do in graphite so i start out by mapping out the fur direction with a darker color but with very light pressure and then I'm going to build up the colors so building up the pressure as well so I start out um, adding a base color then darkening up the shadows then adding the shadows in between the clumps of hair in this in this ear and then I pull out the highlights adding more layers add more shadows then in the end it all comes together so you always have to go to through a little ugly stage i would say and then in the end it always comes together quite nicely so my biggest tip for drawing in color or learning to draw in color is to actually start in black and white so that is what i did i worked in black and white for so long uh, actually for all my life and then when i was about 20 I started with color but because I already knew black and white I already knew value and contrast it was so much easier for me to to uh, take the step to draw in color as well so that's a very big tip I want to give you if you're struggling with color work um, make sure to go back to the basics first so learn black and white learn graphite and charcoal and you can also work in black and white with colored pencil of course you can so you can also use only the grays and the blacks and the whites and you can create just images with those alone so that's my tip for drawing in color make sure to know values and contrast first so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i will start uploading two times a week again so i'm uploading on thursdays and I'm uploading on Saturdays. The videos will be tutorial related, so I won't do as many like quick sped up time lapses anymore. I will focus on tutorials in colored pencil, pastels and graphite. So that's what you can expect from my channel in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.